Hey guys, and welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about how the wealthy think about money and mindsets for wealth and success. Let's do it. Number one, money should work for you, not against you. Okay. And so money, you want to invest in assets. You want to make your money work. You want to invest in investments and to get your money moving. I made this mistake so many times when I was younger and I was like, I'm going to save and I'm putting my birthday money in a bank account. And yes, and I would love seeing the money go up and boop, my account would just increase. Right. But I was not making my money work. It just got to chill and relax in the bank account, which didn't do anything. And so you want to make your money work for you, whether that's investing in a skill that can you can then make more money. You want to invest in an asset or a property that can make more money for you. You want to invest in investments or skills, whatever. Invest in something and use your money to make more money. That's the key. Get it working. Number two, building wealth does not mean you have to sacrifice happiness. And so this is so funny, but regular people and people will be quick to say, you know what? I'd rather be happy than wealthy. And I'd rather just be happy. And wealthy people are quick to say, well, why can't you be both? Why can't you be happy and wealthy? Because you can. And there are studies that have proven to show that the more money you have, the National Institutes of Health have said that the more money that you have, the happier you, happier you typically are. And there are some um, cutoffs for this. And some studies have shown that $75,000 is the amount that you need to make to be happy. Um, but then other studies, or people like Cody Sanchez say that, eh, you probably need like $500,000 and then you will probably feel good and be able to afford most things that you want, right? And so money is freedom. Money is a tool. And so if you have more money, you can buy more things that make you happy. You can do more things. You can buy your time back. And all of these things are critical and can help you be healthier and happier. Number three, wealthy people know that time is more valuable than money. And so typically you need money to be able to give yourself time. And that is one reason I am so obsessed with and interested in building wealth because I know it can help me live a happier and healthier life. I can buy more things and buy more healthy foods and take care of my family, but I can also buy my time back, right? How many of you have seen people who have to keep working the rest of their lives and they can never retire, right? And so there are these two extremes, but basically you want to be able to give yourself time. I want time with my kids. I want time with myself. I want time working on my goals. I want time doing things that I enjoy. And so if you have more money, you can buy back more time. Something interesting with this is how much money do you need to make to be able to outsource things? And so maybe you could buy back your time with if you are able to hire a cleaning service. Maybe you're able to hire someone to do your job for a day and you can work for days a week. Tim Ferriss has the four hour work week. And if you want more information on that, let me know. But this really opened my mind and expanded my mind to not necessarily just working four hours or retiring on the beach, but making your money and your time and being intentional and making things work for you and making systems that actually help you and support you. And how many of you guys work from home or have that ability to, and that saved you on commuting or that time away and you have more time to exercise, more time to take care of yourself, more time to feel good. And so time is critical. And I love time. So any way you can get time, go for it. Number four, wealth and health are actually intertwined. And so the Lancet found that the wealthiest Americans actually live 15 years longer than the very poorest of the Americans. And actually people who exercise and do some of these healthier habits are typically more wealthy. It doesn't mean if you're poor, you don't have a lot of money that you don't exercise, but a lot of times they don't have the time to, or there's other barriers to be able to do that. And so wealth, health, they're combined. You can buy more healthy food. You could take more better care of yourself. Yes, there are tons of wealthy people who are not healthy, but there are also a lot of wealthy people who are healthy too. And so look at those examples. Number five, they leverage other people's money. And so leverage is critical. If you've never heard of leverage, I can definitely do more information on that, but it is critical. And so if you want to buy a house, you don't typically put 100% cash for the house. You're able to leverage it and you're able to put some money down and then someone else pays for it. Same thing with anything, with a skill. You can leverage your time. You can leverage a skill. You can leverage an opportunity and be able to make more money. And so you want to be able to use leverage to your advantage. And most wealthy people do that. They leverage debt specifically in order to build a wealthy life for themselves and give themselves more assets and more money and more opportunities. Number six, wealthy people know that emotions lead to bad decisions. And so they don't react emotionally. They really learn to master their emotions. And I've talked about this, that EQ is greater than IQ in many situations. If you have both, then great. But emotional intelligence and being able to go with the flow and regulate your emotions, you don't just 
buy whatever you want and make impulse purchases. That is actually um, a bad habit and something that a lot of wealthy people do not do. And then also being able to make good business decisions and making good life decisions and relationship decisions. And so mastering your emotions is critical. Let me know if you want a video on this, but it is critical for success and wealth. Number seven, wealthy people know that money isn't relative, it's personal. And so focus on you, stop focusing on someone else, stop focusing on someone else's life. And honestly, this can help you in so many aspects, not just with your financial journey, but what do you want for you? What do you want for your life? How do you want to feel? No one else has to live your life. So stop worrying about someone else. And you can use other people for inspiration or motivation or whatever. That's fine. But stop judging and stop worrying about what they're doing. What are you going to do to improve your life? What are you going to do to achieve your goals? What are Where are you on your journey? Someone else could be 10 steps ahead. Someone else could be 10 steps behind. Who cares? Focus on yourself and figure out how you can serve other people and use your skills to build a better life for yourself. Number eight, wealthy people know that they need to diversify their income streams. And so most people just have one job and that's their income stream. What happens if you lose that? What happens if something happens or you can't work, right? There are some other options, but most wealthy people, they have multiple streams of income. Now, some of the really wealthy people or Alex Hormozzi might say, it's not about all these streams of income. Now, I will argue that, that typically you might have one main source of income, but maybe you have a business and then you have different branches of that same business that are different streams or you make money and you're able to invest it in other things and other assets. So typically that's what wealthy people do. They don't just have an income and then do nothing. They invest in products. They invest in other services. They invest in investments and different type of investments and assets, right? They have multiple streams of income. Diversify. Number nine, rich people and wealthy people believe that risk should be calculated, not avoided. And so it's important to take risk. Most wealthy and successful people, they've taken some risks in their lives, but they are calculated. They do research. They learn. They figure out what is going to be the best risk. And what do people say about the risk they're going to take? Is it a really high risk? Is it low risk? Is it moderate? What's the upside? What's the downside? And then they make a good decision. But typically, if you want to be successful, if you want to get something that someone else doesn't have or the majority of people don't have and that you want, you're going to have have to put yourself out there to get it and so you have to decide is it worth it or is it not number 10 be willing to delay your gratification this is a great skill and there are so many skills of wealthy and successful people but there was actually a famous psychologist who studied and did the marshmallow test and so i posted about this on my channel before and if they were able to wait a few minutes then they're typically more likely to be successful and they've also found that these types of children ended up having higher SAT scores. They got into better colleges. They were able to graduate college. They had higher salaries, etc. And so be able to delay your gratification. If you want something, that's great. It's great that you want something, but can you wait? Even with your kids, try experimenting with this on them. Can they wait for something? Can you make them wait for something? Sure, sometimes I could just give my son something, but instead I will sometimes have him wait. We need to wait five minutes. We need to wait 10 minutes. Oh, we have to wait two hours depending on the thing. And it's crazy typically it might be a little disappointing and working through that emotion can be normal as well but then you learn that skill you have to learn it you have to be able to embrace it and train that skill and that muscle and so delay that gratification and you will be successful 11 rich people know that a home is not an investment it's typically an expense so yes you can make money in the long run or there's a huge debate on renting versus buying but one of the critical things to know is you're going to spend a ton of money on your home. If you don't just buy it outright, you're going to have to spend money in insurance and you're going to have to spend money in interest. You have to spend money on fixing things up or making things how you want it or a roof that needs to be repaired or whatever. Typically, it's not an investment. It is something that you buy and you need a house and a place to live, but know that you need to have other like rental properties or in apartment complexes or other things to actually make more money or investments in the stock market in your business and other things. It's not the number one wealth builder for really wealthy people. Number 12, they never stop learning. And so make your desire for knowledge insatiable. Always look for more knowledge. Always look for how you can improve yourself, how you can grow, how you can be better and then do those things. But you want to learn, you want to grow, you want to be open to getting more knowledge. That's how you're going to be able to do more things that will help you achieve your goals and be more successful. 13 surround yourself with high achievers this is so important for success and i've actually done this with like my instagram or with youtube i find people who are motivating and inspiring and who are 10 steps ahead of me or 100 steps ahead of me and that can motivate me encourage me and inspire me because i'm going to step up and be there too right and so be careful who you surround yourself with it can truly impact your entire life and you want to make sure they impact it in a positive and helpful way
And lastly, number 14, adopt an abundance mindset instead of a scarcity mindset. So be careful. I know even myself, I think pretty positively most of the time, but I realized I had some habits and some things that I would say to myself that were more in the state of lack and scarcity instead of abundance. And so I'm going to do more videos on this. I do have one on my channel if you want to check that out. But how can you think more abundantly? How can you think more in possibilities and that things can happen and that there's enough success and wealth and money and whatever you want for anyone to go around? And so expand your mind. A lot of the success journey is the skills, the habits, the things that they start thinking about and doing, but it's a lot about your mindset and your belief and your faith and persistence. And so I will be sharing more videos on that, but make sure you stay abundant. All right. So those were some lessons from wealthy people and rich people and some of the mindset shifts and the things that they do and that they avoid doing to be successful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and what you would do, or if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. I also would love if you guys subscribe and like for more and share with a friend. I love building this community. It's been so fun sharing different ideas. Let me know what's helpful to you because I want to make content that is actually helpful. I am sharing my own journey and experience, but let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. You've got this. Keep learning, working, and growing. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.